has good technique, he will be elite. If his technique becomes great, not just good, then he's a Hall of Famer. Fighting through contact, fighting through off the line, beating the double team, multiple moves stacked into one, just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, we're supposed to football, not storylines. So he's going to be right here. We're going to watch him. During all these plays, I'm going to drink my coffee because uh, usually, you know, whole different routine. But we had to crank out the last show because, again, uh, I want to be done with it. So right here, near Hesh, uh, deep. This isn't um, overly bad. Um, the one thing I will say, it's, it's second and 10-ish, it looks like. Um, when I was watching him and oh yeah, transparency, I always do it. I watched 2020. I pretty much, uh, I pretty much watched any game that he was over like 25% in. Um, and I watched weeks, uh, four, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So the last, you know, six game he played, I watched and then week four, cause he played like whatever it was, 50%. Um, the only thing I did notice about him is while, while at times he is safe in terms of like leveraging himself over route concepts. Um, typically in terms of like his horizontal relationship, like splitting the difference between routes. I think he's pretty good with that, but there are definitely times where he plays, he plays um, too high over them and he, and he doesn't really give himself the flexibility to drive down. Um, I know these guys push up a little bit more upfield, but this other safety, you know, cover two look uh, Tampa two. Um, he's a little bit more down. You have to be down enough where you're, where you're not retreating to the point where you're not going to be able to play any concept. And they run this like this crease concept right here. Um, uh, or Mills, sorry. And he's so far at the top that if they did drive the ball, or if Rodgers did drive the ball, you know, at this point to him, he's a little bit too high. Again, it's a little bit nitpicky on this one to start. Um, but it, it is something I noticed. So I recorded it pretty, pretty, uh, pretty early on. I probably saw it a time or two before that. So um, drop into man coverage. Okay. Um, he's right here. He's gonna be 41 every time. Obviously. Well, unless you change, I guess you can change your number mid mid season, right? I don't see a rule. Why not? So I like, I like his athleticism um, for sure. And when he does play, you can rotate to the strong side and all the, and, and you know, all of that because he is athletic enough. And I like this play from him. Um, they drop into just they, – they rotate to cover one hole. They're showing like cover three, um, but they rotate into like a cover one hole where um, he's going to drop down to, to the man on this number two receiver of this tray set. Um, and I like his leverage too on, uh, while, while doing this because, one, um, there's a hole player, so he's helping inside. There's a deep safety. He has help inside. He's, he's rotating down, so he's, his momentum is taking him to the outside. So play the outside, you know, if anything, don't take yourself too, in, too inside, take yourself too outside because you have help inside. So I, I like that he um, is aggressive and shooting down, but also gets good leverage in terms of inside versus outside with the receiver. I'm cool with that leverage with help inside, especially on a, on a rotation down where he wants to um, obviously close around quickly, but pretty good job with that. Gets pretty square. Um, and then opens up, I would say, with good timing, you know, at, at two, three yards it takes a good angle to, to, to get hip to hip. Like he doesn't take it. He doesn't take it too aggressive. He doesn't take it too vertical. Um, a pretty efficient angle right here in terms of matching gets hands on sees the receiver, um, or receiver passing a little bit. I'm not sure if he had the tech. Well, he might've reached out, but maybe it deflected off right there. Um, the receiver breaks on the, on the deep, um, curl deep sit. And he does a pretty good job dropping his, his, uh, his weight and turning with him. Like it doesn't look crazy there, but when you watch it from here in terms of like being able to match that receiver, pretty good turn. Um, so good play. I, I, I like that play for the second, uh, second play of Niesman. Again, all these reviews, we have very honest, uh, some of this we'll see, you know, it's not pretty all the time. He's a, he's a fourth string guy, you know, for a reason on this team or most likely made fourth, uh, fourth string deep right here. So while some reps he'll play too high, 
Um, if you give him a bunch of eye candy as a safety, he's going to bite down on it. Now, um, some some safeties, depending on like what the look of is what the look of it is, if it's like cover four, like you put some stress on them, you know, um, where they have to play kind of man to man on the outside. Um, it's and cover four is not man to man, but in terms of like match zoning and, and matching stems of two and all this stuff, um, you can put some stress on them in, in, in the run game. Um, I don't know why I got into that, but with him being deep, obviously as a safety, you definitely want to play past the run, especially as a deep one guy, because you are the last line of defense. Um, so he has to be more disciplined here. You, you know, leverage yourself over the route concepts, peak in the backfield if the running back has the ball, close ground. But he can't fall for this play action bite as a cover one guy and let routes get behind him because, you know, let's say it was just a play action where Rodgers didn't make it out and he was trying to hit this corner, you know, and he did. Guess who's fault to this? You know, obviously the corner, you like the corner to play better too, but he's in, he's no man's land right here. He's doing nothing because he bit hard on the, on the play action. He gets to get over the top or he tries to get over the top. He's been shooting run game. I like I, I, he played more high for the Falcons. I thought because of his aggressiveness, because of his tacking ability, because of he's a little bit stocky. Um, I like him in the box. Um, so maybe May, May and Jordan play more high and then box, you know, I think Jordan could do it. I think May could do it, to be honest. I think all the safeties are pretty versatile that they have, which is good because you need to be um, in the scheme they're going to run. Um, but he's right here, 41. Lead toss, zone blocking. It's just a different way to hand it off. It's like an outside zone lead. Um, good job by 97 years shooting. Which is that Jar I think it's Grady Jarrett. Um, <clears throat> but he comes down in the run game and is backside pursuit, sees an open A gap, takes it, and he's probably he's probably just playing over the top Deion Jones. He's not necessarily going to shoot, but he's just playing multiple gaps. Um, but Neesman's in a position where he could be more aggressive. He's not like, he's just reacting, not necessarily um, reading and having to get over the top. And if he is shooting backside, he has to be a little bit more aggressive. So shoots the backside A-gap, um, is able to stand up or, or to stay on line, even with a punch um, coming into him from an offensive lineman. Comes in pretty hard on uh, on Javante Williams, not Javante Williams, um, Wow. Um, whatever, wh whatever his name is. I'm, I, again, I literally just got up. So I, I forget his name right now. It's not Javante. It's North, North Carolina. Oh, that's going to bother me. I'm going to remember in like 20 minutes or as soon as I end the podcast, but <clears throat> good job timing the snap. Um, good job being aggressive. Again, you can see the build holding up versus offensive lineman. Now, is he going to take guys head on? No, but for him just to just stay on track like this, getting caught in the shoulder, some guys are going to fall down. So good balance. Um, good angle to cut off uh, Williams and um, good tackle or good assist to tackle. Oh, that's going to another crap out of me. Uh, needs to nearly be deep right here. Deepest defender on the near hash or near the near hash. Okay, so we talk about nearly, <clears throat> nearly beat deep. Okay, so it, they could be playing one um, where forty three just missed it or just missed his assignment, and now he's getting back to him, and he's playing whole. Um, they could be playing. That, that I say one, they could be playing three as well, just with guys biting up and maybe it was a blitz and maybe one of these guys got sucked up, whatever. I do know that uh, Neesman is playing deep. Again, whether it be cover, uh, I'd say it's probably cover one. Where is, what is that? Uh, 83 is not Scanling. Again, I'm going to forget a bunch of stuff. Whoever 83 is, I would usually remember that. 
I'd also remember the name of, of Williams on the Packers, <clears throat> but um, he gets quickly over the top of the outside, um, the route from whoever the hell that is. And in terms of just playing it deep, what we're, we're going to talk about is, is the lower half. Um, <clears throat> if you are, if this, this is the only focus, which it seems to be, I don't know whether bracketing them and it's in it's, or, or if it's true cover one looks like they're just bracketing. Um, so a little bit different of a look, but this guy is underneath playing in what ends up being trail. And he has inside leverage and it doesn't really matter if he broke outside, he'd be fine. But the thing that, that Neesman wants to do is he wants to get in the back pedal he could break inside or outside right here. So you want to play both and you're high enough to get into a back pedal. And if he cuts, you drive on the, you drive on the route break. You know, you don't want to stay too high. Like we talked about before, but in terms of opening up early, you know, he's, he's opening, he starts to, to, well, one, he's already,